Well, hey folks, how you doing? Thanks for coming back on this episode of In The Loop TV. I'm your host, CTC, Cutting Tool Counselor, here with another great episode. Before we get started, I hope you're enjoying these, and if you are, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share it with anybody that you think might gain from the experience and knowledge that we bring from a cutting tool perspective. Other than that, this is a great episode because we're gonna talk about something a little bit different. We're gonna talk about thread mills. And there are a lot of things that go into thread mills. We need to understand how a thread mill works versus a regular standard tab. We need to understand what kind of style there are of thread mills. We need to understand how to program in this. And there's a lot of stuff that's involved with thread mills. That's what these episodes are gonna be on. So please stick around, come back, because we're gonna talk about it next. Well, hey folks, thanks for coming back. And this is gonna be a lot of fun because we're gonna talk about thread mills. And when it comes to thread mills, there's a lot to learn and there's a lot to understand. So where do we start? We have to start at the beginning. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how a thread mill works. What makes it work? What's the difference between a thread mill and a tap? How do we create threads? And maybe a little bit, what's involved in a thread and how does a thread work? That's where we have to start. From there, I think we'll create a couple more episodes that explains the different types of thread mills. And then, why don't we talk about programming a thread mill because that can be a little bit tricky too as well. So let's just stick with this episode. Let's talk about threads, let's talk about thread mills, let's talk a little bit about what's different in a thread mill, and let's dive into that. But where are we gonna run? We all know you could say it. We're gonna run to the shop and we're gonna talk about it next. So let's just quick, very briefly, just talk about what a thread is and how it works. So a thread is basically a continuous spiral, okay, with a pitch, a distance between each one of those spirals, and mainly those are 60 degrees. So the lobes on those are 60 degrees, and it actually makes a thread that locks into a mating part, either on an OD or an ID. Now all these threads can be different dimensions or different forms, right? We have NPT, which is national pipe thread. We have UN, we have metric threads. There's a lot of different kinds of threads, but they're all based on a continuous spiral with a pitch, with a depth, to actually make the mating part lock in. Follow so far? Now, when we look at that continuous spiral that we just talked about, the continuous spiral, if you're familiar with a tap, a tap is a threading tool that actually goes into a hole that has a continuous spiral on it and actually put those, puts those threads on. Now, a tap is going to give you the exact dimensions of what you want for an OD. It's going to give you the exact dimensions of your pitch, and that pitch is the distance in between each one of those threads, and it's going to give you all of that, and it's going to go one shot into the hole. It's going to come out, and it's going to make a thread. So let's just real quickly talk about pitch. And I don't mean pitch like on a ball field because this is a cutting tool show. It's not a sports show, people. So it's a cutting tool show. So I mean pitch on a thread. The pitch is very important, okay? Because the pitch is the distance between each one of those lobes, or in this case, they're 60 degree. So the distance between each one of those is called the pitch. Now we established a tap has a continuous pitch, and that's what puts that on there. So now, Let's talk about what the difference is with a thread mill versus a tap. A, a thread mill doesn't have continuous pitch, which means if I want 12 threads or 14 threads or 32 threads, and uh, when I say threads, threads are measured by threads per inch. So when I say it's a 32 pitch, that means there's 32 threads per one inch. Now these are UN threads. If I say there's 14 threads, there are 14 threads per one inch. Now, the coarser or the lower the number, usually the deeper the thread. Keep that in mind because it'll come in handy later on. The finer or the larger the number, like 32, 48, the lower the depth of the thread is. Keep that in mind too because that's gonna actually make a difference 
when you're programming these and getting tool live. So understand a thread mill does not have a continuous thread like a tap does. It does not spiral. Each one of those lobes or what I call 60 degree pitches are in line with each other. So they're actually straight across in line. So the only way to form the continual thread is by using a CNC machine and helical interpolating those threads on your part to get that pitch. Understand? Got it? I hope so. Let's move on. So basically what we're doing with a thread mill versus a tap, a tap goes in, one shot comes out, your threads are there, your dimensions are there, which means all the dimensions on that thread that you're putting in internally with a tap have to actually be on the tap. A thread mill is crea creating all of those dimensions. So think about that. You're creating the dimensions that a tap does with a thread mill. So if you're creating the dimensions, Boy, the versatility of a thread mill versus a tap is much greater. So now let's just talk about a couple of the advantages and disadvantages to using a thread mill over a tap. And trust me, there's a lot of advantages for using a thread mill over the tap because we're interpolating the threads. So we have a lot more control. So what's the first thing that we have control over and it makes it a little bit better? First thing is we have an excellent finish. A tap is really getting aggressive. It's driven by the taper. That's something we could talk about a little bit later, but the taper has a lot to do on the tap. Now we can interpolate those threads by a climb milling motion and we can cut it more like a end mill. You're gonna get an excellent surface finish on there. And part of that is because we're making smaller chips. Number one, smaller chips. Smaller chips are always great, especially when cutting and using a cutting tool. We want smaller chips. Why do we want smaller chips? They're more manageable. Anytime we can manage the situation with a cutting tool, it's always great. So now we have smaller chips. We can make a full thread depth with one tool. Let me explain. A tap comes with thread limits, okay? Which means you can't make a tap cut oversize. You can't make it cut undersize. It comes with a limit usually called an H limit on a tap, which means if you wanna make your thread or your hole a little bit oversized or a little bit larger or get that tap to last longer, you have to buy a different tap. With a thread mill, make any size hole you want, any dimension, any thread limit you want with the same cutter. You can go to 100% thread. This is a huge advantage with a thread mill. You can control how deep your threads are versus getting a special made tap with a different limit on it. Also, you know how taps come with different tapers on them? Some of them are spiral taps, some of them are bottoming taps, some of them are for through holes, some of them are for blind holes, which means not going through the part. Guess what? On a thread mill, use the same thread for a blind hole as you do with a through hole. Get those dimensions, get those flexibility, and use that thread, thread mill, to make any thread you want. Doesn't care, it's not really picky. You can generate these with that tool. So it's a lot easier than getting a tab made specifically for a blind hole or for a through hole, or depending on how many threads you need at the bottom or how many you need at the top, there's a lot more versatility with the thread mill. So these next two advantages I really like because they're really huge when it comes to a thread mill, right? Because we're trying to establish what are the advantages to using a thread mill over a tap? Now we're kind of talking internal holes, but now we can talk external, right? A thread mill can actually do an external and it can do an internal, right? It can do left-hand threads. It can do right-hand threads. And I'm talking with the same thread mill. You don't have to change it. You can use the same thread mill to do a left-hand thread and a right-hand thread. It all depends on how you program it, which we're gonna talk about later on, maybe not this episode because this gets pretty long, but you can do a left-hand thread, you can do a right-hand thread. You can do an OD thread, you can do an ID thread with the same thread mill. You can also do different diameters of the same pitch with the same thread mill. So what does that mean, different diameters? Let's say you have a quarter 28 thread. 
which means it's a quarter diameter. It's 28 pitches, which means 28. Remember, we talked about 28. 28 is 28 lobes within one inch. That's what the 28 means. Let's say you have a one inch 28, which means you still have the same pitch. If you have the same pitch with different diameters, use the same thread mill. You don't have to get a tap. You don't have to get a different tool. So thread mills are very versatile for all those options. So there's a lot of advantages to using a thread mill over a tap. So I feel like I should have done maybe a countdown on this, right? Like, what's the number one advantage to using a thread mill over a tap? But trust me, if you folks out there have ever used a tap and you're a machinist, I think you know what the number one advantage is to using a thread mill over a tap. Try and get a broken tap out of a hole. Not very much fun. A thread mill, if it breaks, if you're not using it correctly, either drops to the bottom or breaks off. You do not have to drill out a thread mill versus a tab. So in my opinion, as a machinist for years, the number one advantage to using a thread mill over a tap is not drilling that thing out or scrapping apart at the end of the day. That's a huge advantage. So is there a disadvantage? Is there a disadvantage to using a thread mill over a tap? It's not as fast. I mean, think about it. The tap goes in, comes out, right? Thread mill's got to be interpolated. And depending on the material, you might have to do a few passes. And depending on what style of thread mill you're using, you might have to run it more than once. So it's not as quick as a tap, but it's going to get you a lot more versatility. It's going to go a lot quicker in the long run, and you're not going to have to put so many different taps in there in your tool holder to actually get through the job. So it has a lot of advantages. Not going to be quicker, but it is going to last longer. Okay, so let's just recap this real quick and talk about this because there's a lot of information that I've kind of thrown at you with thread mills. And this is the beginning, trust me. I told you, this is going to probably be a three-part series on thread mills. So the next one, look forward to. Um, so really quick, what's a thread? Well, on a UN thread, I told you, it's defined by a number, right? A quarter 28 is 28 pitch. That's what we need to know. Now, if you wanted to know what that pitch was or what those lobe heights were, it's all within one inch. So the 28 is a number that's within one inch of threads. That means there's 28 of them in there. So if you wanted to figure out what that pitch was, you would do one inch divided by 28, and that's going to give you your pitch or your distance in between each one of those threads. Now, on metric, it's a little bit different. Metric will give you an M8 by 0.5 or by 0.7. The second number on a metric thread is actually the pitch or the distance on one revolution. It's different with UN, right? It tells you how many revolutions are within one inch. So make sure you understand that because it's good for calculating it when it puts it in your software. Those lobes are what gives you your thread. So folks, that's it. That's it on this episode. I want to kind of keep these short. Just wanted to explain a little bit of what a thread mill was, what the advantages are, what the disadvantages are, and how it kind of works and how to understand what threads are, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm breaking this down into three parts. Please come back. Please come back for the next episode. Next episode is going to be great because what we're going to talk about is now that we know what a thread mill is and how a thread mill works, why don't we define the three types of thread mills, right? There's a triform thread mill, which is kind of interesting. We carry at Harvey Performance. There's single form thread mills, and there's also multi-form thread mills. So we're going to break down on the next episode what those three differences are. So please come back. Please enjoy it. Please like. Please subscribe. And before I go, do not forget, there's three things in life we're never going to get away from. Death, taxes, and spring passes. Have a great rest of your week, folks.